Hey, it's Dave here. We've got part two of this little mini video series on bloating. And in the first video, what I basically said was that bloating is typically caused by some combination, uh, which is unique to each person, of too much bad stuff being in the digestive system and not enough good stuff being in the digestive system. And we said that the bad stuff is bad food, bad bugs and bad toxins. And we said that the good stuff that can actually uh, go missing or become inadequate is good food, good bugs, and the digestive juices that you need to break down your food and keep your digestive system nice and healthy. So we're gonna unpack and start to look at each of these different variables on its own. Now they're all interlinked, so it's difficult to break them down and look at them all absolutely in isolation, but we can do our best just for the purposes of these kind of explanations. Now, we're gonna focus on bad food in this particular video. And there's not really any uh, tight definition of what a bad food or a, a good food is. There may be some generally bad foods that human beings uh, aren't really meant to eat, but even in certain circumstances, those really bad foods can be really good foods. So if you're a starving child in Africa, anything that you can get in your mouth that provides nourishment uh, to the body is probably deemed to be a good food. But if you're looking to totally optimize your health or overcome symptoms, certain foods that, that are good in that situation might be really bad um, to try and get you to where you want to go. So it's quite a complex dynamic of, of this idea of good and bad. But when we're talking about the digestive system, and particularly we're talking about bloating, we've got a certain uh, group of foods that typically aggravate the bloating. And they'll aggravate the bloating particularly if the bugs are out of balance. So if the microbiome is out of balance, then these foods tend to cause a lot of problems for people. And they are carbohydrates, sugars. You can use those two terms reasonably interchangeably, although they don't necessarily mean the, the same things to, to different people. You've got fiber, you've got alcoholic drinks or booze, and you have things like fizzy drinks, soda pop, and what have you. So pretty obvious that the fizzier the beverage that you drink, the more chance there's gonna be of bloating because there's a lot of gas in that beverage. So sometimes people come along to us and they want really complex answers for the health problems. And then when we look at their diet, they're, they're drinking five, six cans or bottles of beer or uh, cider or uh, Coca-Cola or lemonade or whatever it might be. And once they stop drinking those beverages, the bloating goes away because they're not shoving all of that gaseous liquid down into their digestive system. So don't always look for complex problem, uh, pro uh, solutions to your problems. Sometimes the solutions can be absolutely really straightforward, very inexpensive and, and dead simple. If we move on to the carbohydrates and the fiber, the reason these foods can cause problems is um, the bugs in the digestive system ferment those substances. So when you eat them, uh, and particularly if your gut bugs are out of balance, you'll get fermentation and fermentation produces gas. And gas can accumulate in the intestine a little bit like air going into a balloon and poof, you feel all blown up and swollen and six months pregnant, as we said in the previous video. So the, reducing your intake of these foods can be really helpful, particularly the grains, processed carbohydrates and sugars, um, cereals, uh, biscuits, cakes, those kinds of things can, can really alleviate the bloating from your system. Now, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes there are other influences in terms of what you're eating uh, when we get into the bloating side of things, but we're not gonna talk about those until we get a little bit deeper into the, uh, the discussion on the gut bugs. Now there's an interesting dynamic, as I said, between the foods and the bugs. So a lot of the time we see people whose bugs have become out of balance because they're eating too many of these foods. So they keep shoving these fermentable foods into the digestive system and some of the bugs have a field day, they overgrow and now a, a bunch of bloating develops. And in that case, the diet was, was the reason that the bugs fell out of balance. But sometimes the bugs are out of balance first and that imbalance needs to be addressed before people can start enjoying these foods again. And so it, it, it's sometimes difficult to know which is the chicken and which is the egg in this situation. But usually both of these factors need to be addressed. You need to address your diet and you need to address the microbiome and look for the imbalances in there as well. So very, very simple video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have some bloating right now, my recommendation would be to look at these foods 
uh, analyze what you're actually doing in terms of your diet and see if you can reduce your intake of these foods and certainly reduce your intake of fizzy drinks and certainly don't drink the fizzy drinks at meal times. There are you know, two or three really simple steps that you can take right away to see if that makes a difference to your bloated symptoms. Now in the next video, we're gonna expand and talk about the bad bugs in a little bit more detail. And we'll really go into depth about which of the different bad bugs can overgrow, cause problems, how you find them and, and discover which ones might be a problem for you, and then how you can deal with them and, and get rid of them so that the bloating comes down and you get a nice flat tummy again. So as I say, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will catch you next time.